monkey. It sounds like something out of science fiction or perhaps a Halloween prank. But this time they are very real and they're being heralded as a key milestone in medical research. Scientists say that they have for the first time been able to genetically modify primates in such a way that the implanted gene is inherited by their offspring. It's a development which researchers are claiming marks a breakthrough in the treatment of genetic diseases such as Parkinson's. But animal rights campaigners say it's unethical. The BBC science correspondent David Shukman has this report. Under ultraviolet light a few years ago came the strange sight of mice modified to glow in the dark. Some say this is a step too far. The mice had a gene added and it's the glow that proves it's there. Cats have been used in a similar process, also injected with a gene. Researchers say this technique should help develop new therapies and cures, especially with the news today. From Japan, these pictures of marmosets, the first primates to be modified, the closest creatures to us to be artificially altered in this way, a pair of feet in close-up, glowing in the dark. The starting point for this project was a jellyfish, one that's fluorescent. Researchers studied its DNA and managed to isolate the gene involved. Then they took the embryo of a marmoset and using a harmless virus, they injected the gene that causes the glowing and it took hold. The result? The feet you can see in the dark. And there's more. This baby marmoset was fathered by one of the modified monkeys, the creation of a new line which researchers hope will accelerate the hunt for better treatments. We're at an early stage at the moment, so it's, very, it's difficult to say how useful this will be, but it's the next stage in trying to develop mi or mimic um, Parkinson's. And once we can get this developed, it could take one year, two years, five years. It's, it's very difficult to say. But how far should this go? Recently, these beagles were modified. They carry the gene that glows. Critics say this research is just wrong. There is a line ethically that people are uncomfortable with. People don't want to see experiments done on chimpanzees, for example. People, as I've said, don't want to see experiments, painful experiments done on monkeys because their capacity to suffer is too great. Well, tonight some researchers are calling this, as a, calling this a milestone, that animals so close to us can be modified to test new treatments. Others warn that creating a colony of new creatures simply won't be accepted. There'll be difficult arguments ahead. David Shukman there. Well, for more on this scientific development and what it could mean for the treatment of human diseases, we're now joined by Anthony Chan from the Emory University School of Medicine in Atlanta. Thanks for coming on the program, Dr. Chan. Just explain to me uh, once again, please, in very simple terms, how injecting a monkey with uh, a gene that passes on a dye, a glowing dye, to his offspring can help us cure diseases like Parkinson's. I think this is a milestone for not just only for primary researchers, but also by biomedical science. By doing so, we are now able to produce a large number of animals or transgenic modified animals and allow us to use those animals for researchers to, doing, to studying Parkinson, Huntington's, or Alzheimer. And also, we have the genetically modified primates that can inherit to the next generation. We can now study the impact of inherited genetic diseases between generations, so it is really two milestones. So uh, some of the experts in the film that we just saw there by David Chukman expressed some doubt about whether this would actually work in humans. You don't share that doubt. You're certain that this will actually lead to results at the end of the day. Yes, I think we, at least I think this is a step forward for allow us to allow us to understand how genes or how genetic disease of or developing humans and using a primate that closer to us geno genomically as well as physiologically that will allow us to believe that animals that carry the genes that lead to human diseases will capture the symptoms or clinical features that won't be able to capture in the other species except primate. And are you prepared at this stage Dr. Chan to put some sort of time frame on this? I mean how long will it be before we can see practical medical results from this research? Well, I'm sure I think one of the advantages of using mammoth is because of the short gestation time as well as the, the short time to reach puberty. And like for us, I think we're working on the Huntington monkeys models that we already seen that I think those, the monkey that we have generated with the Huntington disease, they develop the clinical features like dystonia or chorea that 
is comparable to human diseases or H Huntington patient that no other animals have been able to capture. So we believe, I think we have a mammoth set that carries genes and carry to the next generation. We allow us to really understand or study the genetic impact between generations. And very briefly and finally, uh, Dr. Chan, are there certain diseases that are more likely to benefit from this than others? And you mentioned Huntington's and, and Parkinson's. Are there others, for instance? Well, definitely, I think infectious disease will be benefit from that. I think we can genetically modify and, and, and monkeys that uh, will be more accessible, acceptable to, to disease like HIV or so, then we allow us to study using these primates to study HIV or some other infectious disease. Dr. Chan at Emory University Medical School, thank you very much for joining us. And to understand exactly how today's research will be impacting on human beings, of course, we can talk to Dr. We have just talked to Dr. Chan, but there are more questions uh, that have been raised by this. Uh, in another first today, scientists have produced a high-quality DNA sequence of mice after a 10-year effort, makes them the second mammal after humans to have their genome detailed. Humans and mice share 70% of their DNA. The scientists hope that similarities will help in the development of new treatments for human diseases, rather like in the last.